we will now discuss, will the, now topic discuss the topic collection of, collection data. of data let's start with what are the sources of data firstly we have is the primary source under this the data is directly collected from the source of origin for example interviewing the people with the help of questionnaires second is the secondary source it is the source under which the data is already compiled by some other individual or an organization for example if i want to know the number of bank branches in india i can take the data from the rbi and it would be then considered as a secondary source of data after studying the sources of data it is important to know the types of data first is the primary data it is also considered to be the first hand information vessel defines it as the data originally collected in the process of investigation second is the secondary data it is the data which is already collected by some third person or organization Blair defines it as the data which is already in existence and which has been collected for some other purpose than answering the question in hand. So what are the differences between primary and secondary data? Firstly, primary data is original and is collected by the investigator directly from the source of origin. while secondary data is the data which already exists and hence is not original secondly primary data is collected to solve a specific objective and does not require any adjustments later on while secondary data is already collected for some other purpose and requires further adjustments to suit your purpose lastly primary data is very costly in terms of time money and efforts whereas secondary data is less expensive or sometimes does not even cost anything it is easily available on the internet now that we have studied both types of data in short let's discuss them in in detail now in this video we will be only dealing with primary data so What are the prerequisites for collecting primary data? Firstly, the objectives should be very well defined while collecting primary data. Secondly, type, content and the number of questions to be asked should be pre-decided. Thirdly, the scope and coverage of data collection should be precise and clear to the investigator. Fourthly, mode of collecting data should be selected based on the objectives and size of information to be collected. Fifthly, the questions for the interviewer should be simple and precise. Lastly, the respondent's privacy and confidentiality should be preserved. So, what are the methods of collecting primary data? We have four methods direct personal investigation indirect oral investigation information from local sources and information through questionnaires which further includes mailing and enumerators methods let's discuss them in detail so first method is the direct personal investigation under this the investigator personally talks to the informants to get information thus it is important for him to be polite and diligent this method is suited under the conditions where first the field of investigation is limited second greater degree of originality is required third information is to be kept secret fourth accuracy of data is required and last direct contact with the informants is required the merits of this method are firstly data acquired is original secondly data is accurate as it is collected personally thirdly data is reliable because it is personally collected by the investigator fourthly the investigator may obtain other information as well when he or she meets the informant 
and lastly data is uniform as it is already planned by the investigator therefore facilitating comparison and investigations can make adjustments in the questions as per the need of the R. The demerits are firstly the study is wide this method becomes very difficult secondly in this method some level of personal bias is involved on the part of the investigator as a result the data may lose its credibility thirdly this method is costly in terms of time money and efforts involved fourthly in this method the area of investigation is small and therefore it is less representative which may further lead to inaccurate results Second method is the indirect oral investigation. Under this method, the information is collected from the third person who is expected to have the necessary information. The persons from whom the information is collected are known as witnesses. For example, in case of robbery, the neighbors are asked to provide the necessary information and hence they are called the witnesses. This method is suitable when there is a large field of investigation. Direct contact with the informant is not possible. Informants are ignorant or illiterate who cannot provide information and the investigations are complex in which only the in experts can provide information. The merits of this method are that this method is appropriate in case of wide coverage. It is less expensive as experts can provide the investigator information about the items. Investigator can seek the opinion of the expert making his data reliable. It is free from personal bias of the investigator and it is simple to conduct a survey through this method. The demerits are as follows. Firstly, the information is provided by some other person other than the concerned one. The data obtained may be less accurate. Secondly, the witness may have a personal bias which can affect the results and lastly, the conclusions may be doubtful due to the carelessness of the witness. There is a thin line between the two methods, thus it is important to study the differences between them. Firstly, in case of direct personal investigation, the investigator is in direct contact with the informants, whereas in indirect oral investigation, the information about the informants is collected from the third person known as witness. Secondly, direct personal investigation is useful when the field of investigation is small. An indirect oral investigation method is used when we have a large field of investigation. Thirdly, the direct personal investigation method is costlier as compared to indirect oral investigation. Lastly, the investigator must be well versed with the culture and the languages to extract information from the informants whereas no such quality is required under indirect oral investigations. Third method is the information collected from local sources or correspondence. Under this, local people of an area are appointed by the investigator to collect the data on his behalf. The method is suitable when regular and continuous information is needed, the area of investigation is large, information to be used in journal, magazines, radio, etc. and high degree of accuracy is required. Merits are, firstly, this method is effective in terms of time, money or efforts involved. Secondly, it allows wide coverage to gather information. Thirdly, correspondents provide information on a continuous basis. Lastly, it is suitable for special purpose investigations like index number of agricultural prices, etc. The demerits of this method are, firstly, due to the fact that there is no personal contact with the respondent, the late data loses its originality. Secondly, as the data is collected by a number of correspondents, it loses its uniformity. Thirdly, there may be some personal bias of the correspondents. 
Fourthly, due to the absence of personal contact with the respondents, the data might not be very accurate. Lastly, there is a delay in collection of information through this method because various correspondents are working in different places. Lastly, we have is collecting information through questionnaires and schedules. In this, the investigator prepares the questionnaire to collect the information. Under this method, we have firstly the mailing method where the questioners are mailed to the informants to fill and are sent back to the investigator. This method is suitable when the study area is wide and also when the respondents are educated. The merits are that firstly it is economical in terms of time, money and effort. Secondly, the information being supplied by the informants makes the data original. Lastly, it covers a wide geographical area. The demerits are that the informants don't take interest in filling the questionnaires and returning them. Also, they might send incomplete questionnaires. The questionnaires can be answered by educated respondents only. The questions cannot be changed according to the convenience of the investigator. The data will be inaccurate if the respondents are biased and also difficult questions may lead to inaccurate answers. Under the enumerators method, the investigator himself meets the respondents and questionnaires are filled by the enumerator himself. This method is suitable when field of investigation is large, investigation needs specialized and skilled investigators, and investigators are well versed with the local language and cultural norms. The merits are as follows. Firstly, this method covers wide area and includes information provided by the illiterates as well. Secondly, the data obtained is more accurate because enumerator himself collects the data. Thirdly, there is personal contact with the informant. Therefore, accurate and right answers are obtained. Fourthly, as the enumerators don't need the information for themselves, they are generally impartial in the collection process. Lastly, the questionnaires filled by the enumerators are complete. The demerits are, first, due to the involvement of trained investigators in the survey, this method is considered to be expensive. Second, unavailability of efficient enumerators may harm the accuracy of the information. Third, the training provided to the enumerators makes the method time-consuming. Fourth, as the method is expensive, it is not suitable for private investigations. Lastly, if the enumerators are biased, the data may not be accurate. After looking into the pros and cons of methods involving questionnaires, it becomes important to know the qualities of a good questionnaire. First, a covering letter should state the purpose of the survey in a simple language and should provide information to the informants. Second, there should be a limited number of questions. Large number of questions make it time consuming for the respondents and they may then become impatient. Third, Language of the questions should be simple, lucid and clear for the investigators as well as the respondents. Fourth, questions must be placed in a proper manner. Fifth, undesirable questions must be avoided. Sixth, no controversial questions should be asked, especially the ones related to religion or politics. Seventh, questions involving calculations by the respondents must be avoided. It becomes tedious for the investigator to make calculations while asking questions and thus there may arise human errors. Eighth, some questions should be asked from informants on a trial basis. If any difficulties arises, then the questions must be reframed accordingly. Such testing is called a pilot survey. Ninth, a questionnaire must contain clear instructions for filling the form. Tenth, the informants should be requested to return the form back. Eleventh, more objective type questions should be there.
The following types of questions can be included in a questionnaire. Firstly, simple alternative questions like yes or no should be asked. Secondly, multiple choices questions should be asked. Thirdly, specific information questions which involve precise data should be asked. Lastly, open questions like suggestions about traffic in India, etc. should be asked to reflect upon the suggestions by various individuals. After the exhaustive discussion about primary data, it becomes important to know the advantages and disadvantages of primary data. The advantages are, first, primary data has high degree of accuracy if it is collected by the investigator in an appropriate manner. Second, it is collected on the basis of a definite objective, hence does not require extra caution. Third, it is collected on an extreme basis, hence depicting data in great detail. Fourth, it frequently includes well-defined variables and units used in a precise manner. Last, sometimes secondary data is unavailable, hence the only option left is collecting the primary data. The disadvantages of primary data are First, primary data collection is time consuming. Second, collection of primary data is expensive. For data to be reliable, training to the enumerators etc. needs funds. Hence, there is a need for finance. Third, some inquiries don't require primary data. Fourth, extensive effort is required in collection and interpretation of primary data. Last, Proper skill is required to gather authentic data. So this was about primary data. In the next lecture, we will discuss the secondary data. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. You may visit our website www.economicsharbor.com or email us at admin at the rate